Hello from Bush Gardens. We are here today to try out a lot of rides because we've never been to this park and you can see right behind me Iron Guazi, one of my most anticipated rides this year for 2023. I've been looking forward to riding this. I know it opened last year, but we haven't made it out this way, and we are very excited to try some roller coasters here. And today is the Silver Pass preview for the Serengeti Flyer, so hopefully we can get a visual for you guys on that as well. We have the GoPro today, so you guys will have some great footage of the roller coasters and any rides that we do. So go ahead and tag along with us today as we go ahead and experience Bush Gardens for the first time in 2023. I would like to point out as well at Busch Gardens at this moment, you do have the Mardi Gras festivities going on. They do have parades running at 12.30, 2.30, 4.30, and 6.30, as you can see by the sign here. And they have some food booths and some other options to kind of explore the Mardi Gras festivities here. And I don't know how much we're gonna do today. We'll probably, you know, dabble a little bit in it, but for, just for you guys, I wanted to point that out that Mardi Gras is happening over here at Busch Gardens and over at SeaWorld. I do want to point out today really quick as well, we are in the upper 80s, almost 90 degrees, so it is starting to get hot here in Central Florida. But we are going to go get on some rides now. I think we're going to start off with Iron Guazi, because that just seems to be, again, that's, that's what I'm looking most forward to. It's right up here at the front of the park, so let's start there. We are currently waiting in line right now. They had to basically override the carts. There's another one in back there. They just sent an empty cart. We've been waiting up here for probably 15, 20 minutes where we are now. We are the next ones to go. So yeah, I guess we'll see what ends up happening. Hopefully we can get on. The, the wait was kind of long, but as of right now, we're just hoping that this gets up and running and obviously we want a safe, a safe ride, but it just kind of sucks that we were next up here and we had some issues. Here we go. Oh my God, I have nothing to hold on to. What do I just do? You hold the handle. I guess I just hold the handle. I'm sad no one's gonna like cure us on. a very intense ride. I think that's probably the most intense ride in the Central Florida area. I guess like is Tampa considered Central Florida? Should it be. kind of is. I mean it's in the middle of Florida. It's just like the west side of Central Florida. It doesn't matter. That ride is intense. We did the front row. We did the back row. I don't know if I'm putting both footages in there. I'll definitely put the front row in because obviously that's the best option for it. But that ride was wild. The back row though, even more intense. Like leaps and bounds more intense than the front row and I think it's just you're getting whipped around and they talk about how like crocodiles like grab and twist their their preys or whatever and I mean you feel it in that back row just the way you're just getting dragged through super super cool ride I don't know that might be like my favorite ride here 
in Orlando. I don't know, or not Orlando, but in Central Florida. It's hard. We'd have to rank it, but I mean, that was intense. What do you think? It was incredibly intense. The front row is like awesome because you see everything happening and like you're terrified of it. But then the back row is intense because you can't see anything happening. You're just feeling it and it's pulling you so fast and you're whipping around and you're flying around and it's crazy. I mean, I made him go twice back to back, so obviously yeah. I loved it. So I think I think I put the footage in there. You should see it from my phone. Uh, we were like we were technically the second in line, and then the people in front of us left, but they they t couldn't get the people out. Their seats weren't coming undone, so it was like 20, 25 minutes, or maybe about 20 minutes. They ended up like pulling out this device that they could unlock the seats, and then they were like, you know, we're gonna have a delay. And I feel like within five or ten minutes five after minutes. that, like they did two like sample runs and then they were like yep we're back up and running so go. yeah so we ended up finishing that run and then we just like got right back in the line before it started to go up i think it was posted 20 minute wait mm -hmm. oh. up to 50 now already yeah it, it got it got pretty backed up there so i don't know awesome awesome ride iron guazi here that's a hit that's an awesome ride so now we've got to actually get into the park because i feel like we haven't left the front of the park here so now we're actually going to head into more bush gardens probably try some food because i'm getting a little hungry it's already four o'clock because we did wait quite a bit for the first ride. Second ride wasn't bad. Well, let's get into the park now. Again, maybe some Mardi Gras food? I don't know. What do you think? Mardi Gras food? I might eat some popcorn. Popcorn. Always with the popcorn. Always with the popcorn. <laughs> Nicole is just pointing this out right as soon as we were talking about eating. This cupcake corner here have, they have some really weird flavors. So they have a lemon and lime fruit cupcake. Yeah, it's probably okay. Then the citrus buttercream. So it's orange and strawberry marble cake. Eh, okay, it's probably not too bad. But then over here, you have a chocolate cake infused with Louisiana hot sauce and a flaming Cheetos buttercream. Weird. Lime buttercream with vanilla cake with blackberry jam and diced mango. It's like very bizarre flavors. I mean, like, specifically this one, the, this weird hot Cheeto one, or flaming Cheetos. I don't think we're getting one of these. I think I would want just like a basic one, but if you guys are interested, they do have some really unique flavors and it's $15 for a four pack or $8 for one. But it's also part of a sampler punch card. Oh, so if you do get the punch card, I guess maybe you could get one per is my guess, how that would work. I don't totally know the layout of this park, but you can see right here where we are, it's like a lot of Mardi Gras stuff here. They have two booths over there. They have some sort of just art here that I'm assuming you could take photos with. And then they have a stage right over there. So they have quite a bit going on over here at Bush Gardens for Mardi Gras. And again, another booth right in this section. So I don't know if they, kind of seclude the Mardi Gras and not really put it all throughout the park or if they're more so looking to just have it um, everywhere. I don't know. Kind of bizarre that they just jam pack it here, but I guess it makes sense for the crowds. Over here you have a potential photo op opportunity. You've got some flamingos dressed with some Mardi Gras designs and hats and beads and everything, but this is kind of a nice little photo op here. You got the little saint emblem. I don't actually know what that would be considered. But yeah, you have just a little bit of, I don't know, just signage and decoration. Life is too short to not sparkle. There's too much glitter, said no one ever. Few things pertaining to beads. I'm kind of a bead deal. Or what did I just say, hit me with your best beads. So yeah, a little photo op opportunity right around the corner from where we just were as well. Well, we ended up picking up the pass holder, basically the punch card, I think is kind of, oh. There's also the Mardi Gras parade happening next to us, I think, because they just kind of came marching through. So that's kind of fun. But yeah, we picked up the pass card. So you basically pay $60 and you get two additional punches. So it's normally 10. As a pass holder, you get 12. So yeah, we ended up picking up the dirty rice here and then a like andouille sausage sandwich kind of thing. But the sausage looks pretty massive and a pretty decent helping of the dirty rice. So we'll go ahead and try this out and let you know what we think. I guess I wasn't super expecting to get a ton of food here, but now that we got the punch card, might as well use it. There they are throwing beads into the crowd. Not quite as big and crazy as Universal's by any means, but it's still a fun little event that they do here. And again, the crowd's not crazy. I feel like you gotta really cheer. You gotta, you gotta get going for the beads. I feel like Universal people go nuts. They're kind of just hanging out, which is not bad. I actually like the color of the beads they've got here. You guys can't really see, we're a little far away. But they've got like white and green and blue, but they look very sparkly. I feel like the ones from Universal are a little a little bland. No. Yeah. No. All right, uh, first impression on the rice, we'll give it to you here in just one second. So Nicole and I both kind of agree, it could use a little bit more punch of flavor. 
the seasoning isn't super crazy. It's not bad. It's kind of basic. Uh, I think it's a safe bet, to be honest. It's good, not great, but like definitely edible. It's something I would definitely get and I would eat and I'd be happy about it, but I'm not like, oh wow, this is crazy. Yeah. I think the dirty rice at that boat right place that I love, the dining hall, so much flavor. So yeah. when I saw this, I instantly thought of that, but it's not bad, it's just not very flavorful. There you go. Big portion though. It is a decent sized portion. So we'll try the sausage. Look at the size of this sausage, by the way. It's massive. Can you just see the thickness of that thing? Like, there's my thumb for comparison. I mean, that thing is huge. You only get half, I guess, to be fair, but like, yeah. that is a gigantic sausage. Initial impressions of the giant sausage here. I really like it, actually. I think the sauce is really good. The sausage, here's the thing. A lot of times, like, the bigger hot dogs and sausages sometimes weird me out. I feel like it's just too much meat. This one is actually really good. I feel like it's really well flavored. And because it's almost kind of that kielbasa -y style sausage, it works out really well. Your thoughts? I like it. I'm a big sausage, kielbasa, Polish sausage fan. I think it's really good. I don't love the sauce. Um, it almost reminds me of like one of those like mayo ketchup mixtures, like the mayo chops or but a bit spicier, but it's not bad. I just don't love it. But the sausage and the bread and the lettuce, I really do like. Well, there you go. Maybe you wouldn't love the sauce. I liked it a lot. I think the whole thing kind of comes together really well. Like that, a little pricey, but thankfully we have the punch card because I think it was $11 for half a sandwich kind of. But with the punch card, it's just one punch. So kind of works out. But we just finished up that meal over there and it was quite yummy. I liked it a lot and Nicole thought it was good. Um, I don't think she loved the rice. She said it was, again, same thing, kind of good, not great, but it was still a pretty nice meal. But right behind me here, we have flamingos. Take a look at these. These are very bright ones. They're very large too. I feel like the ones like over at Animal Kingdom, they seem like they're a little smaller. But they do that thing. Do you see that where they have like their head down in the ground? From what I heard, it's like they're um, they're trying to like fish up fish, I guess, at that point, or like scoop them up. That's kind of interesting the way they like dig their mouths. It's like they put their head upside down. That's what I heard. Oh. Uh-oh, what's happening over there? I don't know, or is it going crazy? But very pink here, which means they probably get some good crustaceans, I think. Now we are going to head this direction because Shikra and Tigris are over here, so those will be our next two rides on the agenda. And I don't know exactly where we're headed, but we're just gonna kind of follow the path and willy weave our way around and hopefully end up at one of the two and we will get you guys some sweet footage of that in a minute. What's happening here? Also, I think Sesame Street's over here. Haven't done that. Obviously, haven't been here in a million years, so obviously we haven't done that, but maybe we'll check that out. That might be a separate video, just we're trying to hit some rides today. As we walk through this covered bridge, we were just talking about it. We rode Iron Gwazi first. And if that's probably the most intense ride in this park, there's a good chance that everything else in here just doesn't hold up, I guess, the same way. We're still obviously going to ride everything, and there's different levels of intensity, obviously, and you can't just have every single ride being the most thrilling in the world, because then you don't have a tier system, right? But I do see Tigris and I see Shikra, which means we are in the right area. So we're gonna go ahead, probably do Shikra first, I think. Based on the sign here, it looks like Shikra is right here. So, Shikra first, then Tigris, let you know what we think. What? That oh no, he's no. starting. Oh, we kept watching from the beginning, right? What? This is going to go this way. Yeah. Oh, Pretty high up here. 
I'm going to insert the tigress clip now. It's dark, so hopefully you can see a little bit of it. And then we will talk afterward so you guys can kind of understand what happened. But here's the tigress clip. Kind of a little goofy situation here. Here you go. Oh, that's so dark. got off of Tigris and we did Shikra and Tigris and we literally just went straight from Shikra over here to Tigris and got footage of both. However, the posted wait on Tigris was 30 minutes. We waited probably an hour and a half. Shikra was pretty long. I've got to say, I'm liking the park a lot. The coasters are a lot of fun. Operations are horrible. It's I feel like on average you're spending about three minutes because they have a little clock and it shows you what the like timing is from when the car gets or the train gets into the station until it leaves. Almost every single time it's around three minutes. Three minutes to send out a coaster. Tigris is a 40, like three second long ride or something. It's, it's right over 40 seconds. So you're spending three minutes to send them out. Literally, I was just talking about how good the operations are over at the Incredible Hulk coaster, they're doing 45 seconds per car or train that they launch. 45 seconds to launch those over and over and over. Their operations here are just not good. It was the same thing at SeaWorld. And I get it, they only have one train that comes through, but like when that train comes in, like get them in, get them on and like, and go. I feel like they're just, they, everyone just like is just sitting around, they're not doing anything and they just like walk and waddle and like, there's no anticipation to get things moving. There's open seats all over the place. I think on Shikra, every single time, there was at least two to four seats available. I don't know. The, the coasters are a lot of fun. It seems like an awesome park, but they've got to pick up those operations. They, are, they just feel horrendous right now. And here we are, it's 7.15, and we've been on four rides technically in, I don't know, six hours or so. I mean, we took a little break for food, but I mean, you just, you can't really get anything done and the posted wait times are not accurate. So we are heading over towards Cheetah Hunt because that was one of the things we really wanted to do today as well. And again, this park is pretty big and I'm, I'm actually excite, excited to come back, but I think I'm just so frustrated with the operations right now because we should have been able to do more than four rides in six hours. And I mean, we'll, we'll end up doing five rides in seven hours by the time we finish today. But it just, I mean, that's crazy to think how long 
these rides go, and there's not that long of a line, to be honest. Like when you're waiting in line, you're like, oh, this doesn't like this isn't gonna take too long. And then all of a sudden, an hour later, you're like, wow, like this thing just didn't move. Quick cue didn't help as well, and that's okay. But I don't know. It just I'll debrief it later. But I just I feel like this is a great park, but they've got to fix the operations here. They really do. All right, we are walking back to the car really quick. Let me just get home, about an hour, hour and a half drive, and then we will wrap up, and I'm gonna give you my thoughts on Bush Gardens. Well, I just realized that I told you I was going to make an outro, and now I'm going to make that outro, but it is very late. I think it's almost two in the morning, and I'm in the process of editing this video. And I was thinking to myself a lot, I was like, you know, I was pretty upset with the operations of Bush Gardens in general today. I felt like we should have been able to get a little bit more done. And I think in my head, I'm imagining Universal and Disney operations where I feel like they are very proficient. They've got that down to a science. I mean, it's get in, get out within a minute. I feel like I've talked about it multiple times. Incredible Hulk does 45 second operations. And um, like, I just, I give them so much credit for it. And they just, it's like three and a half minutes on a lot of their rides over here at Busch Gardens, but I really can't fault them on that. You know, I can't be that upset about it. Everyone operates a little differently. Everyone has different safety protocols. So just overall, Busch Gardens and SeaWorld, I feel like are two very, very unique parks here in Central Florida. I think they are both worth visiting, hands down. Busch Gardens is a massive park, like massive, massive park, which is really cool. I'm really excited to kind of dabble with it a little bit more and, and actually go and experience a little bit more of what it has to offer. Um, we obviously just did a few coasters today. I think we're actually planning on going back next week. So that'll be pretty cool if we get to do that. But honestly, like Iron Gwazi was, I mean, my mind is blown how cool that ride is and just intense. I don't know. I loved it. That was awesome. The roller coasters there. I mean, they're, they're so cool. And like, I don't know if, it, if if Bush Gardens gets like the credit that it deserves for the amount of really good coasters and we haven't even done all of them. Granted, I think we did kind of like some of the best ones there, but definitely an awesome park. And with just all of the extras that you can do there, I feel like that's hands down an amazing opportunity for somebody if you're not looking at Disney and Universal to take an extra day, go over to Bush Gardens for sure, and SeaWorld, same thing. SeaWorld doesn't have quite as much, in my opinion, as Busch Gardens does, but both of them are awesome parks. But Busch Gardens, like I'm I'm looking forward to going back to the park and I'm like, I wanna go ride everything else. I wanna re-ride the rides I already did. I wanna experience like the, the animals exhibits that, that are all over the park. There's just so much that we didn't even get to do today. And I still feel like we had an awesome time. So yeah, just it's, they're, the operations, I don't wanna say that that takes that much away from the park because overall it was still an amazing experience and like I said I'm, I'm ready to go back already and I think we have plans this upcoming weekend like I said so um, yeah I don't know just really really cool but all right I need to finish this up it is way too late but thank you guys for hanging out with us today and if you enjoyed today's video please give it a thumbs up it helps out more than you know uh, honestly like it, it is very, very helpful for the channel. Obviously, you know, if you guys wanna see more content like this, please subscribe to the channel as well. That helps out a lot. We do have a goal of 1,000 subscribers for 2023. It's a long shot, but we are, you know, aiming high. But either way, okay, I'm gonna get out of here. Thank you for joining us today. We'll see you in the next video. Take care.